That's where I left uh, the other side, but that's where I left the Montañas Vacias. But yeah, this is uh, Beteta, so I'm back on Montañas Vacia. I know someone is gonna say, you're missing 500 meters, fuck it. Uh, what's the point? It's a, it's a paved road. There on the corner there is water. This is a Juntamento. Very nice. Nice and charming Betita. Look, it's 18 degrees. Feeling 17 degrees. 17 degrees, it's half of the temperature of two days ago. And remember, there is no summer below 30 degrees. There is a nice lagoon down there. I have this hill to climb and then we go down to a little village and then it's gonna be almost 70 kilometers to the next village with lots of uh, climbing. That's it, I think that's the village. Loaded up with water, montañas vacías, keeps on going. Traffic Jam, Montañas Vacías edition. I've been climbing for a while. I thought I could uh, enjoy a bit of this and but no. This is where I turn left and hit dirt. I have another 10 kilometers of climb. It's so much nicer on dirt though. So much nicer. It's beautiful, beautiful montañas vacías. I think I'm about 14, 50 above the sea level. Asiar, sí. un nombre vasco. Mi padre es de, de Guadalajara. Ah, ok. Mi madre de Zamora, bueno, que yo vasco, vasco, sí, he nacido allí, pero no vamos. Entonces no hablas vasco. Sí, sí, hablo. Sí. sí. A friend from uh, País Vasco, Basque Country. Look, too light. He needs some weight there. This guy, similarly to the others I met on Montañas Vacía. He traveled very light. He had a problem to find food today. He told me he had to bag at uh, one of the bars to give him some food because uh, this weekend uh, it's like a uh, holiday in Spain, in these pueblos, and everything is uh, already booked in advance. He's only carrying a sleeping pad and a very light sleeping bag. He said he can't sleep uh, outside, so he needs to get to the refugio. The next refugio is in 25 kilometers, which I don't think he'll have too many problems to reach today. But then, tomorrow, he needs to do 150 kilometers. He said that he's... Uh, averaging about 100 kilometers a day. So that's like 50% more. Jesus, what a sad place. They cut all the trees. They didn't leave one fucking tree. Maybe this could be a nice spot to camp actually. Oh well, let's keep going another little bit. The temperature is dropping very fast. Now I'm stuck in this valley. I need to keep going. Luckily the river is dry, but still a bit humid. I changed valley and it seems much nicer with more opportunities to camp. 
gonna keep going another 10 minutes. I think this is it. I don't wanna descend again into a valley. I'm gonna check the map, but 90%. This is where I'm gonna camp. This is perfect. Buenos dias. Good morning, guys. I'm in the forest. Looking, looking for adventure. No. I'm in the forest looking for uh, this smash bag that I keep on uh, on my bike with uh, snacks and a bit of food. And yesterday was full of food. I had lunch for today. I had bread, cheese. I had uh, some kind of Oreo cookie that I find in a supermarket yesterday. I had two boxes for 150 and I ate one. So I had one. I had some uh, cereal bars and uh, yeah, bits and pieces and loads of uh, dry dry fruits that uh, there were an offer on uh, in Cuenca on Lidl and I bought them. And usually that bag is tied to my handlebar even during the night. I don't know why last night I took some uh, some of the dry fruit as a, as a dessert and then I didn't bother to tie the bag to my to my handlebars and I just put them on a, on a pannier on the vestibule of my tent because I thought yeah let's put it on my vestibule and I put it on top and uh, yeah, at midnight, uh, the biggest fucking fox I ever saw grabbed it. Then I ran out of my tent naked and I found a fox eating, trying to open the bag. And but when she saw me, he ran up, up. So now I went up a little bit, but. It's uh, it's 30 minutes. I'm looking for the bag. I found nothing. So that's it. Then at 5 a.m. that fucker came back. I kid you not. He dragged like it's super fucking heavy. The pannier. He dragged out the pannier from my vestibule. I'm like, what the fuck? Like I got back back pain when I have to leave that fucking pannier. Because it's uh, it's full of uh, it's full of food now. I bought tortellini for the rest of uh, the way. It's dry fruits, uh, yeah, it's full. There's uh, there's lots of things in there. It's quite heavy. Anyway, that's the campsite. Yeah, usually I keep the the mesh bag here, and I tight it. But you midnight. Peaceful. I sleep very well, except the fucking the fucking fox. And then I started to have really bad dreams, like not bad dreams, but I was in a town, unknown town, called Alhambra. So I suppose it's Granada. <laughs> very touristy. And for some reason, I pitched my tent in a street that was not used a lot, but it was like a paved street near a junction. And I, and I put my bike there. And, but there was a warm shower host, and I went over to see if he would uh, uh, host me for the night. But I left everything there. So then I, when I was at the warm shower hose and he said no, I was thinking, okay, I'll go back and I'll sleep in the tent, but probably by now uh, they robbed everything or a car ran over it. Very weird, very weird. I'm fucking weird. Not only culinary disaster, also monetary disaster, this fucking fox. I would estimate at least seven, eight euros worth of food that I have to replace it here in the mountains. It's double cost and the mesh. The mesh bag was free. It was, uh, was a mesh bag that uh, 
I bought some gear and it came into that. Uh, I can't remember if it was a piece of clothing or some camping gear that came into that mesh bag, so it was free. But there was a little carabiner. Now I have to use this one that is quite expensive from Sea to Summit. And this one I use it to, to store my rain gear uh, during the winter. Or if, if it's a period that rains a lot and it doesn't rain, then here I can put my hard shell, the jacket, the pants, uh, shoe covers, and I can store them and uh, tie them on the handlebar. And then uh, when it stops rain, when it rains again, I can take them out and put them easily in. So yeah, at some point I'll need to buy a, one of, a new one of these. Or probably this is as big, as big uh, enough for my ring gear, but it's probably too big for food. So financial, financial disaster. Foxes. Back on the road, Montañas Vacias, with a new bag. It's a little bit too big for food, probably. But it is what it is. I lost my lunch. Terrible, terrible. I would estimate at least 20 euros worth of damage between the bag, the food, the food that costs double in these mountains. Tough climbing right off the bat. I don't know if I'm on top or I need to climb uh, up there. Let's find out. I think this is the last bit of climbing. It has to be. There might be a little bit more climbing before starting this ending. Let's see. Beautiful, beautiful. Very, very beautiful. Very nice view. the famous rewarding views when you get to the top of the climb. It's almost 2 p.m. I could have used that bread and cheese, to be honest. I had to snack on uh, dry fruit and sobaos, which is okay. No complaining. Bah. I think here there is the refugio where the guy last night was gonna come. Let's check out the refugio. Looks nice from the outside. Oh, it's good. Good and uh, good and clean. Someone left some uh, sardines. Good, good stuff. Oh wow, look at that. That's a good gift. Very nice refugio. It would have been nice to, to arrive there and uh, sleep with the guy well, in separate beds. I mean, there was a condom there, but not sure I was attracted to this guy. Um, yeah, would have been nice to sleep there. Would have saved me from that fucking thief of a fox. That's a very nice refugio. It's clean, it's nice, cozy. I like it. Schwalbe, no beneath noise of the nobinic eating up the tarmat. Yet another dam. Not sure if it's low or... I love these mountains. Different uh, layers of sediments. Beautiful. Beautiful. The village is too small for groceries, at least let's, uh, let's get water. Not much going on in Bermud. 
No grocery. The bar is there, but it's closed. But I feel for the guy I met yesterday, because he was, uh, he was sure, first of all, that there was a bar after 11 kilometers after the refugio, which I told him there wasn't. I mean, I told him I'd be very, very surprised if there is a bar in the middle of nowhere. Then he said, okay, uh, I'll get some food at the village. Yep. I didn't see one single soul in the village and the bar is closed. There's another village in uh, 12 kilometers. I would guess there on the map, it looks slightly bigger, like maybe like five more houses. The village is coming up in uh, one or two kilometers. It's just behind those trees. But I had a look online and uh, apparently Next there are no groceries. So I checked the following one, also no groceries. And then uh, the third village will have groceries. It's not too far. I think it's uh, about 15 kilometers. So big. I don't understand how there isn't even a small grocery shop. Look, the village is also a new suburb. When I... Hay una tienda de alimentación por aquí? Hay una tienda de alimentación? ¿De comer? Sí. Ahí más adelante está el chiringuito. Ah, okay. Gracias. Ah, uh, the suburb has a chiringuito. Looks too fancy and expensive for me. But if you can come on, if you come on Montañas Vacia, here you can uh, chill. I bet you can, they let you even camp here. First climb to grocery done. Nothing. The grocery shop is closed because in the afternoon they don't open. The panaderia, the bakery, same. I ask a lady near the, the grocery and she told me I can give you some bread. She gave me a a bag with uh, some food. When I, she gave me a bag with some bread and uh, I think some fruit. So, success anyway. Let's see, I would like to do uh, another 10 kilometers, more or less. We'll cycle. Uh, until 8, 8.30. After 8 o'clock, the first uh, good opportunity I find, I'll camp. The sun is starting to set. Slowly but surely going up. The road should be going up for about five kilometers. Why is it always steeper at the end of the day? Steeper and steepest. This climb is very steep. Three different walls. It's not over yet. Still have uh, another kilometer of climb. Then it goes down a bit, another two kilometers. The sun has set and I pitch my tent. I put on uh, an underwear t-shirt under this mid layer i'm gonna clean my face 
to remove the sunscreen. I'm putting on my dawn jacket and uh, I'm gonna cook tortellini. But look at the moon. Almost full moon. Beautiful colors. Purple, blue. Beautiful. I would say almost an African sunset.